In this tutorial, we'll learn how to calculate standard deviation for a set of data. When working with standard deviation, we are particular about whether the data for our calculations is from a total population or a sample of the population. As we already touched on, the symbol for standard deviation is shown by either sigma, if the data for the standard deviation includes the entire population, or S, if the data used for the standard deviation calculation includes a sample of the population. So you can help remember by thinking of S for sample. The formula you use to calculate the standard deviation also looks slightly different, depending on your data. We use different symbols for the mean, and for the number of data points we use the capital N if we're talking about the whole population, but a little n to talk about the number of data points in a sample. In both cases, we are giving a subtraction here, each data point minus the mean, and then squaring, same in both. And then this symbol here tells us to sum or to add them all up. It might look a tad complicated, but if we use a table to stay organized with our calculations, it's actually pretty easy to calculate the standard deviation for a small batch of data. Let's try it out on an example. Here are the heights of a team of five basketball players. Determine the standard deviation of this team's heights. So first step is to determine which formula to use. Since we have all of the data for the team, that is all five players from a team of five basketball players, so We'll use sigma to show that we're using the entire population in this calculation. So here's the sigma, or total population formula, that we'll be using. Now the main task in our calculation is to sum up all of these squares in here. So definitely a table will help our state organize and show our work nicely. The main goal of our table will be this last column, each point minus the mean and squared. So the rest of the table is just to lead up to that. We'll need each data point, so we'll put those into column 1. Just copy those in. And then we see that we need the mean, so we'll add up all of these points in column 1, and then we'll divide by 5, and we get a mean of 2.14 meters. We then put the mean into each row of column 2. And next, column 1 minus column 2 for each point. For example, row 1, we have 1.5 minus 2.14, and that equals negative 0.64. And then we do the same process for the second row and all through our data. Lastly, we get to column 4, but we're all ready for it. So all we have to do now is square each of the items in column 3. For example, for row 1, negative 0.64 squared, the negative disappears, negative times negative is positive, and we get 0.4096. And we just do the same thing for all the other rows. Recall that we need the sum, so we'll add up all of the rows in this fourth column, and we get 0.927. Perfect. This is our sum of squares that we can just plug right into our equation here n equals 5, and we pull out our calculator. 0 0.927 divided by 5 equals 0 0.1854. And then we need the square root of that, and we get 0 0.431, rounded up a little bit. And we remember that the standard deviation will have the same units as the data, so 0 0.431 meters. And that's it we have our standard deviation for this data. It's also worth pointing out that if we were doing the standard deviation for a sample of data, that is using S and the other formula, you'd do the same table, just slightly different symbols, but the same structure. And then when it's time to divide, you'd divide by n minus 1 instead of just n. And then the square root, same idea. Very similar process.